Welcome everyone to a new country, a new city. We are in Cuenca, Ecuador, and we're here in Parque Calderón, in the center plaza, the old historical part of the city, and we're going to take a look around and see what we can find. So come along. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. Here in the middle of the plaza, there is a statue to Abdon Calderon, who's a hero of the war for independence here in Ecuador. You can see him right there with all those pigeons sitting on him. Unfortunately, probably pooping on him. But that's okay. He was a he was he's a hero nonetheless. But the history, of course, here, especially here in the historical center, goes way way back before the War of Independence against the Spanish. This was, of course, a Spanish city dating back to the 1500s, and uh, before that, it was an Incan city, and before that, it was a Cañari city, and even before that. There were settlements here of various different peoples going all the way back 8,000 years BC where in this area was used as sort of a temporary settlements for bands of nomadic hunter-gatherers. And the reason that this area is so, uh, the history of settlement here is so old is because this area is a big plain that sits up about 2,500 meters above sea level, or roughly 8,300 feet above sea level. And it is a flat plain in the mountains, surrounded by mountains. And it's a river basin where four rivers flow into. And because of that, it is perfectly suited for agriculture. And so this is like the perfect place to start a city. And many, many civilizations have started cities here in Cuenca. In fact, the word Cuenca in Spanish just means basin. And that's what this is. It's a big river basin. And as we said, the history goes way, way back. And interestingly enough, if you walk around this uh, historical center, you'll see a lot of that history because in 1999, at the very end of the 20th century, the entire historical center, the whole neighborhood, was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So in addition to having beautiful big cathedrals like this, this cathedral, actually a neoclassical cathedral that was built in the late 19th century, you also have older Spanish colonial buildings across the square here there is the old cathedral it's the cathedral that was built here originally when the Spanish settled in the 1500s and this thing was started building in the 1500s completed in the 1600s and now now it's a uh, it's a museum and I think we should go over and take a look inside because I think it's going to be pretty cool. You know, we've been inside a lot of cathedrals in the different cities that we've visited so far in South America, and some of them are more recent, recently built, like uh, the cathedral in Santiago, which was built in like the, uh, you know, the 1800s, and some of them are much older, like the cathedral that we visited in Cordoba, Argentina, that was built back in the 1600s. But this one, this one may actually be one of the oldest that we've, uh, that we've ever seen. And uh, we'll take a look at it here from the outside first. But before we do, I mean, you can see the architecture around here is all preserved. Basically any building that was, you know, Spanish colonial style architecture, like this yellow building down here on the right, any of those that were still standing in 1999 when this whole neighborhood was declared 
a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Well, those things are going to be basically preserved now because it is a World Heritage Site. So, there's the cathedral over there. Let's go ahead and take a look. Let's go inside, see what's in there. This is the original cathedral. The old cathedral. This is the one they started building back in the, I think, 16th century. That organ up there is the original, I think it's called a bellows organ. Very old. They don't make them like that anymore. And now, of course, this whole place is basically a museum. And the new cathedral is right across the square. The one that they built in the late 19th and early 20th century. This place is really, really great. There's a little bit of renovation construction going on there right now. Looks like they have some documents here from the archdiocese, old archives. These documents here, 1786. There's a lot of old churches in Cuenca. It's referred to as like the city of churches for Ecuador. And because, like we mentioned, the entire historical center is a UNESCO World Heritage Site now. So not only is this church going to be preserved, but all the other old architecture in the center, the downtown center, it's all going to be preserved. So when you walk around the neighborhood, you get a very, um, I don't know, it's a very, it's a very, very cool neighborhood to walk around. Now this down here I think is a crypt. And it's open, so I'm going to go in. Oh, well, it doesn't look like a crypt, actually. Actually, I don't know what this is. It's just a little room. All right, let's go back out. really amazing and I think well I don't know for sure but I would like to think that these paintings these frescoes that are up here are all original from all the way back hundreds and hundreds of years ago I actually found a couple little signs here to do a little more explanation apparently 1832 they had been sort of decorating up till 1832, but then there was minimal maintenance and the church sort of deteriorated progressively. They repainted the whole thing in the 1940s. 
with industrial paints. And then in 1981, they closed the doors to this, this cathedral because the cathedral across the, the square was already complete. But then here, in 1999, they started to restore it. And they recovered some of the paintings. So they like, took the industrial paint off. You can see here. And they recovered some of the like original paintings from underneath and restored them. That is pretty cool. That was really beautiful inside there. And uh, here's this building that we noticed before we came in. You can see it here. And these buildings like this, these old Spanish colonial style buildings, they are all over the uh, historical center. And you know, they're just converted into, I mean like this probably has living space up above. And then there's like, uh, like a cafe down here. There's a, there's a Dunkin' Donuts in this one. This reminds me a lot of uh, the historical center of Lima in Peru that also has a lot of preserved older buildings like this. You see some old, you know, neoclassical or even older Spanish colonial building and there's like a Dunkin' Donuts or a Pizza Hut down the, on the bottom floor, which I think is kind of cool. Sort of the old meeting the new. But as you can see on the square, the architecture is really amazing. Lots of antique architecture. And if you get outside the square, um, the main plaza, the buildings, you know, like this one across the street that just has a pharmacy there uh, on the first floor. You know, all the buildings are like this. I've been walking around down here in the, uh, down here in the historical center. And, um, you know, everywhere you go, you just see these really, really antique old buildings with old architecture, the entire streets line, lining all the street, all the way, all the way down, block after block after block. You know, the whole area of the uh, historical center, I think is roughly like a, a square kilometer, so it's, it's quite big. Um, and yeah, you can, you can see all this really beautiful architecture. And walking along the streets here in this part of the city, it feels very different from a lot of the other cities that we've been to. I mean, we stayed in, a, uh, in the center of the city, for example, in Mendoza, Argentina, when we were there. But, you know, that city was almost completely destroyed in an earthquake in uh, 18... 61 if I remember correctly and uh, when it was destroyed they had to rebuild and when they rebuilt they rebuilt the city center in a different place and also with a different style that city has these big open plazas all throughout the city center the streets are lined with trees they're very wide streets with very wide sidewalks it has a much more modern feel this city very narrow cobblestone streets throughout the whole historical center with these tiny little narrow sidewalks and everywhere you go you just sort of turn the corner and a few blocks out in front of you you're gonna see like beautiful architecture probably a church this uh, this city of Cuenca is known in Ecuador as the city of churches and I think I think I heard that somewhere but there are a lot of churches around here in this historical center area. Pretty much every few blocks you see another one and they're not just tiny little, you know, churches. They're these big, huge cathedral type churches. They're just built all over the place. Very, very cool. If you head off one block basically on the opposite corner northwest of the block, diagonally, you get to this place, Iglesia Santissimo Rosario big beautiful church right here which honestly like could probably be the big main cathedral church on uh, in some cities but here in uh, in Cuenca it's like a church that's a little bit off the plaza and that's the thing that's very cool there's also a college here uh, the thing that's very cool about the downtown Cuenca is in addition uh, to the uh, to the main plaza there's all these little plazas sort of around it. And actually, if we head from here back south, 
we head back down towards the uh, trying to get run over here by not just cars, a tram also that runs through the city center. We head back towards the main cathedral. There's two little plazas right next to the main plaza that are also surrounded by beautiful, beautiful architecture. And right here you can see the backside of the cathedral, the new cathedral where we saw the front, the dome itself. It's this beautiful white dome with like blue paint on it, very iconic. Let's see if we can zoom in from here, get a good look. Yeah, the iconic white and blue dome. And now we can get inside there too and film, but um, it's kind of cloudy out and there's not really good light in that uh, cathedral in the afternoons. Also, there was a, very recently a like blackout in part of the city, and so the lights have been out in some of the businesses. And I went in there, I don't know exactly how much artificial light they use, and whether it was like dark because of the blackout, or just dark because it's cloudy in the afternoon sometimes, and doesn't get a lot of sunlight inside, but it was quite dark. So I think maybe we'll come back uh, in the morning sometime when it's much brighter inside and we can film inside because it really really is uh, very beautiful and very striking inside as well. From here you can see the other domes. The three domes of the cathedral. It really is a very, very large cathedral. I mean, some of the ones that we've seen in some of the other cities have been quite impressive. Um, Cordoba and uh, the one that we saw in, uh, like, well, this is, uh, like the one in Cordoba and the one that we saw in Santiago. Very impressive. But there's something about this one, I don't know. Something very, very impressive about this. Like I said, it looks it looks older than it is. This is actually built starting in the late 1800s and was finished in the 1900s. It's built in a neoclassical style, so it's built at a you know more modern, but made to look made to look much older than it actually is. Really beautiful. And here, one block down in the cathedral, which is right here, right across the street, there's the Plaza de Flores, Plaza of Flowers. And this is this really beautiful place where they always have, it's a very small plaza, right out in front of a very old church. Of course, everything here in Cuenca is kind of like a plaza right out in front of a very old church, at least in this part of the city. The Santuario Mariano. And the Plaza de Flores where all the florists come out to sell their flowers. Very cool. You know what, the church is open. So I think I'm just gonna peek our head in real quick. Be quiet, we won't, we won't disturb anyone. We'll just go in and see. Looks like they're having a service in there. I don't want to stay around too long and film. It's kind of rude to film during the services. But you can see around this plaza as well, beautiful old architecture. Everywhere you turn in this part of the city, everywhere you look, every corner you turn, every street you go down, there's just more beautiful old architecture. <laughs> and of course, all preserved. So it'll you know, likely remain like this for some time. There are some cities in Latin America that are rapidly changing 
and a lot of the old architecture, maybe one building or another building, are preserved as a historical building or maybe even a UNESCO World Heritage Site building like uh, the cathedral in downtown Córdoba in Argentina. That cathedral is, uh, I believe, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. But having the entire downtown historical area here be preserved is something that's really, really amazing. And it makes, um, it's made Cuenca into, you know, ever since the start of the 21st century, into a major tourist hub here in, uh, in Ecuador. There's, in the last 25 years or so, there's been a major, major influx of immigrants, tourists, expats, um, lots of people coming here to visit and see the beautiful city of Cuenca, Ecuador. And here we are on another plaza. This is the uh, Plaza de San Francisco, I think. Um, this is just off of the main plaza, like, you know, a block away. Another beautiful plaza. There's a fountain in the middle here that's currently not working, but the whole thing surrounded by beautiful old architecture and a sign right here, of course much more modern, it says Cuenca. You can get your picture taken, just like she is. Lots of uh, street vendors all through here selling their wares. Just a really, really beautiful city to just walk around. Very walkable neighborhood area around here. Um, and Cuenca itself, the city's not very big, uh, honestly. It's, uh, it's a pretty small city. It's expanded out beyond its original borders. You know, like I said, it's uh, a basin where four rivers flow into. And those four rivers are sort of were the original, more or less, the original borders of the city. And for a long time it was, uh, it was a small city, you know, under 100,000, under 50,000 people even. And it just sort of maintained uh, its existence within what is now the historical center part. But uh, in the late 20th century, the 1960s and afterwards, it started to really expand out past the, uh, past the uh, borders, the rivers, and now includes a lot of other neighborhoods out on the outskirts. The city itself is about 300,000 or so population, and the metro area is about 700,000. So it's large enough that there's a lot going on. It's become like a cultural and tourist center. It's the uh, capital of the Canton of Cuenca, and it's like a major, major city, sort of right in the south, uh, southern central part of Ecuador. But it's small enough that it doesn't feel, um, you know, like a huge, huge metropolitan like Lima, 12 million people, or Santiago, like 6 million people, Buenos Aires, gigantic cities like that. So it still has sort of a small city feel, which uh, is really, really nice actually. From here in the plaza, you can look just over there and see the cathedral from the other side. You know, like I said, everywhere you look, beautiful view of a cathedral or a church or some sort of old architecture. The other thing I really like about this uh, downtown historical area uh, is there's not a lot of tall buildings. Like that's right there is probably basically like one of the tallest buildings in the area other than the actual like cathedrals and the old churches. The cathedrals, the churches, the things like that that are preserved, those are actually the tallest buildings around here. The more modern buildings, they're, you know, four or five stories tall. So you get these really great views. You can see the spires of the cathedrals and the churches poking up above all the more modern buildings, the smaller buildings. That's one of the things that makes this neighborhood, I think, really special because, uh, like Cordoba, I keep talking about Cordoba in Argentina, but Cordoba had a lot of uh, preserved buildings and so did like Lima in the downtown, but also in the downtown of uh, some of those other cities, Santiago, Lima, Cordoba, there were really big skyscrapers, modern ones. So you wouldn't necessarily see all of these, uh, these beautiful views of the old architectural, uh, you know, like wonders like the cathedral over there because they'd sort of be blocked out by big, you know, like skyscrapers. In Cordoba, the central downtown area is um, not only the historical center, but it's also like the financial banking center. So there are these big 
uh, skyscrapers, you know, big like glass skyscrapers that are headquarters for the major banks and financial institutions and things like that. But here, here you kind of get to a corner and you know, you look down the street and you just see all the way down, beautiful architecture on both sides. And at the end, if you look way out past the city, it's all beautiful mountains out in the distance on the horizon. Because, of course, Cuenca, which means basin in Spanish, is just this river basin. It just sits surrounded on all sides by mountains. So like everywhere you look, when you look down the street, you just see these beautiful mountain views. All around the historical center area, it's people selling flowers here in the Plaza de Flores. You'll often find people just out here with like a little cart selling fresh fruit or even just a basket selling fresh fruit. There is delicious, absolutely delicious fruit all across Ecuador. Fruit and vegetables. It's one of the things that uh, even though I've only been here for a few days, I've really, really quite enjoyed. Every restaurant you go to, they seem to, when they serve you a meal, serve you, uh, you know, a side of some delicious fresh fruit or a glass of delicious uh, freshly squeezed fruit juice. And there's vendors all around selling fruit of all different kinds. Delicious, delicious fruit. And we're heading back towards the plaza here, the main plaza. And now, honestly, we've just really scratched the surface here in our first video here in Cuenca. Um, and we're gonna have a lot more. We're gonna have a lot more videos for sure talking about lots of interesting things about Cuenca. We're gonna talk about the history of the Spanish settlement here in Cuenca, talk about Cuenca's interesting story of independence from the Spanish, and also the history of the civilizations that were here before the Spanish. We're also gonna talk about modern Cuenca as a major tourist hub, a center for culture, um, and also a center for delicious, a very delicious and diverse uh, food scene. The gastronomy of Cuenca is becoming, quickly becoming well known, not just for like traditional, um, like Ecuador food basically, but also for restaurants of all different types of food they have around here in Cuenca of very, very high quality. Uh, it's a very interesting food scene. You can find extremely high quality um, gourmet restaurants, very expensive, but very, very delicious high quality food. But you can also find like a little, um, you know, mom and pop delicious restaurant where they're gonna serve you a big filling, you know, homemade style meal, home style meal for like $3 US. Uh, so it's a very, very interesting city and we're gonna see a lot of it while we're here. something that you would like to check out then stay tuned I think this is gonna be the end of this video but uh, stay tuned for more 
We'll see you in the next one. Thank you.